In this video, Dave uses my need for a new computer as an excuse to build something epic. This time he wanted to create an open air case that could be wall mounted and with a bunch of cool lighting effects. Let's see how he did it. The case was designed in Corel Draw. It wasn't very three dimensional, so it wasn't too complicated. Before sending the design to the laser though, I still imported all the 2D shapes into Fusion 360 to make sure everything fit together and that the design overall made sense. I hate wasting material, so I like to try to nail the design on the first try. I chose quarter inch MDF for the case's structural pieces. I wanted a material strong enough to support all the computer components, which could also be easily painted. The MDF was masked with our application tape to keep the parts clean during the lasering process. Before gluing everything together, the application tape had to be removed from all the pieces. I used wood glue to assemble the case parts. I designed a sort of holder for the graphics card that would sit in front of the motherboard so there wouldn't be any card sag, and I thought it would look better. This orientation is pretty standard with adapter brackets and many metal cases. The principle here is the same. You just need a PCI Express adapter cable so that the graphics card can be relocated. This is the bracket that will hold the motherboard's I.O. shield. And this is the bracket that the power supply will screw into. I also added some notches on the base so that a big zip tie could be used to strap down the back end of the power supply. All the areas that got glued felt super sturdy, but just to be safe, I ran some E6000 craft glue along all the seams. I opted to mount the case using a French cleat type of system. I wanted to make sure there was a little distance away from the wall for both cabling and for airflow. We, we keep a uh, half inch and three quarter inch square hardwood dowels in stock for other stuff we sell, so this seemed like something that would work. These are also readily available at local hardware stores. I had a series of 13 inch pieces cut on our saw. I glued two half inch and a three quarter inch piece together. I then added clamps. This assembly would be attached to the back of the case board. I repeated this process to make another assembly that would attach to the wall later. I put a series of holes into these assemblies using our drill press, a few holes to screw them together, and then three pilot holes for the screws that would hold the assembly to either the case board or the wall. I added glue to one part of the French cleat assembly and then attached it onto the back of the case board with screws. I gave the top of it a quick sanding to try to even it out all just a bit. This was stupid as any sanding should have been done earlier, but whatever. It's really not going to be seen once it's installed. I just didn't think about it until I got to this point. Since the case would be mounted away from the wall a bit, it needed to have some kind of feet at the bottom to support it against the wall. I'd cut a series of quarter inch circles to make these feet. Of the entire project, this was the absolutely dumbest thing I did. You're an idiot. I glued the circles together to make two feet. I then wasn't happy with how they looked, so I sanded them down. Not enough though. Then I added some spot filler and sanded again to try to smooth the layers out. Again, not enough. I should have just used more of those square wooden dowels to make feet. In fact, when I finished this project, I thought of a better way to do this that would have also worked with the ambient lighting I added later, but it was kind of too late. I gave everything a coat of sealer to prepare for painting. I was going to wrap some of the computer components in a sort of teal or Caribbean blue vinyl, so I found a matte spray paint color that complemented the vinyl the best. I wanted something lighter in color, but this is all they had at the hardware store, and I didn't see anything better online. I added a furniture felt pad to the bottoms of the wall feet, and then I added some glue and screwed them onto the case board. I had some purple or UV colored LED strips from a previous project. So I thought this would complement the lighting theme I was going to use. Since the LED strips run on 12 volts, I was able to easily wire them into this computer. I made three separate strips. 
one very short strip that would throw some extra lighting up onto the graphics card, and then two strips that would create some ambient lighting on two sides of the computer. I had done this to my personal computer a number of years back that I used for a few years then without issue, so I knew this would work. I didn't use very much length, so I figured the amp draw would be negligible and nothing I had to think about. Power supplies still come with at least one cable with old-fashioned Molex connectors, so I used this with some connectors I had cut off old fans. I just stripped and twisted wires together and shrink tubed everything. I know I should be soldering stuff, but I don't have an iron here and this works okay. Please don't judge. You must be judged! The LED strips had a urethane coating that I had to cut off and then I used a quick connect on the end. Because of the urethane coating though, I couldn't really use the quick connect wires the way I wanted. I just ripped off part of the connector, made the connection, and then used some glue gun glue to secure everything. I added the short piece of LED strip to the graphics card holder. The strips have an adhesive backing, but experience says this won't hold longer than a few minutes. I used some E6000 glue to secure the strip, and then used the glue gun to hold down the wiring. I repeated this process for the case's ambient lighting strips. E6000 glue to hold the strips down, and then a little glue gun action to secure the wiring. Since the graphics card is being relocated onto the bracket, I needed to use a cable extender to connect between the motherboard PCI Express slot and the card's new home on the bracket. So this was attached to the graphics card bracket with some screws and nuts. The last thing I needed to do to get the case ready for the motherboard was insert the I.O. shield. The case board is ready, but before I put the motherboard in, there is a number of things I wanted to do first, starting with putting the CPU in. The AIO cooler is from Enermax. I only mention this because the top of the pump has no cool logo, just their name. Also, based on the orientation on the case, the name would have been oriented incorrectly, like sideways. The only way to reorient it is to take the screws out of the cover and then rotate it. Since I was going to have to take it apart anyway, I thought I could improve its look a little. I started by wet sanding their logo off to get to the clear plastic underneath. I made a really small sticker of our logo. I used a matte black vinyl so that it would match the black on the pump cover. I applied the sticker to the pump, but I screwed it up. I couldn't film this and apply it at the same time. My bad eyesight requires me to be a few inches away to see it clearly. I think my eyes are getting better. Instead of a big dark blur, I see a big light blur. That's why I made an extra sticker though. Second time was the charm. Then I just had to reassemble everything and test to make sure light wasn't leaking from around the sticker or anything. I think it worked out really well. I vinyl wrapped a number of motherboard components to try to complement the case. I started off with an M.2 heatsink. I needed to use a little heat to get the vinyl to settle into some of the curves. I should have tested before wrapping it, but I didn't think of it, so better late than never. I gave it a quick test to make sure the LEDs were working before putting the drive in. Assembly of the heatsink was easy. I just needed to remove the liner on both sides of the included thermal pad and then add the drive. A few screws uh, held everything together. I took off most of the chrome accents on the graphics card to wrap them. These weren't fun to do. The heat gun helped a lot with the application, but this was such a pain, I almost ripped it all off to use paint instead. But the one good thing about using vinyl is that it's not permanent. I can remove it at a later date if I want to do something with the card or even resell it. I wrapped the main heat sinks on the motherboard. This took some time and a really sharp exacto knife to get all the edges trimmed but it wasn't too hard.
as an extra touch, I added our logo onto the square shaped heatsink. I later realized that this was stupid because the graphics card would be completely blocking this from view. Oh well. What an idiot I've been! And then it was time to start bringing all the components together. I started with the M.2 drives. The one with the wrapped heatsink went in first for the OS, and then the larger and slightly slower M.2 drive for general file storage went in. I added the standoffs to the case using screws. There will be a link in the description below for all the non-computer hardware I used in this build for reference. I added what I thought was all the power cables I'd need to the power supply before putting it in. The power supply attached to the bracket with screws that had to be longer than your usual case screws because of the wood's thickness. Again, all parts I use will be in the description below. The power supply was secure, but I figured it wasn't worth taking chances, so I had included a place to run a thick zip tie to secure the upper part of the power supply. I then routed all the power cables to the back side of the board. You can see during this that I had forgotten the cable for the graphics card, but I added it in later. The motherboard went in without any issues. I had already long ago tested that the holes for the motherboard align correctly relative to the position of the I.O. shield. I added thermal paste to the CPU, spreading it with a business card. I already had the AIO's bracket on the motherboard with the screws loosely attached so I didn't lose anything and everything stayed together. I just needed to remove the screws, put the pump on, and then tighten the screws down a little at a time, alternating between them in a crisscross pattern. The radiator was then attached to the board. It hasn't been obvious probably till now, but this is only a 120 millimeter radiator. I know this isn't ideal. I wanted to water cool the CPU, but I didn't want this build to be too big. So even though a larger radiator with multiple fans would cool better, I went with a single fan AIO. I know this isn't optimal for cooling, but instead of just the single fan that came with it pushing air through the radiator, I added a second fan to also pull air out the back of the case. I've seen tests in other YouTube videos that have both a push and pull setup on a 120mm AIO and that it would make a pretty good difference. I added four sticks of 16 gig DDR4 memory. I plugged a lot of cables in, including the CPU pump, fans, addressable RGB connectors, power to the motherboard, etc. I'm not showing the back of the board. Even with tying everything up back there, it's still pretty ugly. The last thing to add was the graphics card. The riser cable was plugged into the motherboard. It was bent just enough for the extra cable to tuck through to the back of the case. The bracket was added loosely to the case with standoffs and bolts. I kept everything loose as the graphics card was a tight fit. That's what she said! The card was secured to the back of the bracket with a standard case screw. The power cable was plugged in and then the two bolts holding the bracket to the case board were tightened down. You can't see it but there's absolutely no wiggle to the bracket so it's very secure. Thanks for watching. I think it turned out amazing and was a really fun project that has also really helped my work a lot. Let us know in the comments what you think, and if you've ever thought about building a computer like this. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to get notified of future projects. We have more computer-related projects coming soon. Stay tuned.